Hey, it's Doug with Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. I have a confession to make. I am a side-slash-stomach sleeper. Ever since the beginning of my backpacking career, I have struggled with getting good sleep because my preferred position of sleep is on my stomach with one leg kicked out, and that does not work well with very many sleeping bag sizes. Because sleeping bags rely on your body heat filling up a pocket of air to keep you warm, they don't like to have a lot of extra room in them, and so many are a mummy shape, which essentially means you're laying on your back with your arms down by your sides, and this can be not only fairly uncomfortable, but for people like me who are also a little bit claustrophobic, it can actually be panic attack inducing. And so when I got restarted in my backpacking a few years back, I switched from a sleeping bag to a top quilt. I have since modified that system a couple of times, and now I'm ready to give you my recommendations for what to do for a sleep system if you're a side or stomach sleeper. All right, we're going to go from the ground up and start with the sleep pad. It is vital to your comfort if you're going to be on your stomach or on your side and kind of curled up. And that is because most sleep pads are 20 inches wide. I have here the Thermarest Z-Lite sleep pad. It is 20 inches wide. And so if you can imagine, your entire sleep system is going to have to fit on this pad. Now, if you compare this to my Nemo Tensor wide pad, which is five inches bigger, you can see that there is quite a bit of difference. The Nemo pad gives me plenty of width, and those extra five inches are really great for a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper. When you're considering the width of your sleep pad, it's not just a matter of comfort, though. It's also a matter of temperature. If your body comes off of the pad and touches the tent floor, there is basically no insulation between you and the cold ground, and that makes a huge difference in your overall temperature experience. So the first step in establishing a good side or stomach sleep system is getting the extra wide pads, get that extra five inches, and that way you're going to stay on it and stay insulated when you're rolling around. Do keep in mind that the number of persons that are typically considered to fit in a tent is usually based on the width of sleep pads. So if you have a two-person tent, it should be at least 40 inches wide to accommodate two 20-inch pads. They are not considering extra wide pads in that measurement, so if you are going to try to get two people in a two-person tent with one or both of you having the extra wide pads, they may not fit. Okay, the next big consideration when it comes to your sleep system is, of course, the bag or quilt that you are using to insulate you from the side and on top. Now, for several years, I have been touting the benefits of the top quilt. By using a quilt instead of a sleeping bag, you can save volume and weight because a quilt is essentially a big blanket that is joined together somewhere around the torso area but stays open at the top. And this has several advantages when it comes to size and weight because you're not paying for insulation and material under you. You're not carrying around the weight of a zipper or a hood or many of the other features that a standard sleeping bag would have. The reasoning behind this is that when you lay down on a sleeping bag, you're crushing all of the insulation that's under you, rendering it practically useless. And if that's the case, why have it there at all? It's just more material and more insulation that you've got to carry around, but it's not actually keeping you warm. And the biggest benefit for a stomach or side sleeper is that because a quilt is not completely completely bound together, you can very easily kick your legs or your arms or anything else out that needs some extra width. The quilt isn't going to be grabbing you because it isn't joined together in the first place. But that is also one of the biggest problems with quilts. Because a quilt is open-ended, it is also very easy to allow cold drafts to come into the system. Now, before all you quilters out there jump into the comments and start talking about pad straps, that I get it. I've been using a quilt for three years. In general, I've been very happy with it. But I have to admit that the quilt works best for people that can just get in, lie down on their back, close their eyes, and fall asleep until they wake up the next morning. That is not me. I need to be able to be on my back, on my side, on my stomach, leg kicked up, leg not kicked up, curled into a ball. And when it comes to that, the quilt just doesn't work as well as a sleeping bag. Even a very restrictive mummy-style sleeping bag is meant to move with you even if you roll over onto your side. And when you do, that's when that back insulation that 
quilters will often point out as useless when you're lying on your back, suddenly becomes very useful. As I was planning for this video, my friend Steve from My Life Outdoors put out a short arguing that quilts were better than sleeping bags, and at one point he rolls over in the quilt, and just before the scene cuts, you actually see a large portion of his back get exposed as he's trying to roll over. Interestingly, almost the same thing happened in a video by UGQ, the makers of My Quilt, when they were demonstrating how their system avoids the problem of drafts. You also see that when the person rolls over, over, the quilt lifts up, exposing his back. Now, ultimately, the system ends up working, but this is not a system that comes with all quilts, even the UGQ quilts, and as was shown and admitted in the video, it takes a bit of expertise to really get it to work. It doesn't mean sleeping bags are better than quilts, it just means that quilts aren't absolutely perfect. Fortunately, there are now sleeping bag systems that are really made for side and stomach sleepers. I'm going to show you a couple of the options right now. The sleeping bag I'm going to talk about is the Nemo Disco. The Nemo Disco has a nice big hood. It's got a pocket in here to keep like a cell phone or something, or maybe like your water filter or batteries that you don't want being exposed to freezing cold. It's got a nice big draft collar. It's a down-filled sleeping bag. It's 650 down. There's an 800 down version with slightly thinner materials, but this one is a little bit more in my price range. Both the Nemo Disco and the Rift are rated at 15 degrees, so these are very warm bags, which is one of the reasons that I love these Thermo Gills these really interesting vents. These things unzip and they allow you to vent the top of the sleeping bag when you're maybe getting a little too warm. They allow you to take the bags into situations that aren't quite as cold as they are potentially rated for and actually change the temperature rating of the bag manually so that you can use these bags in a much wider variety of situations and not have to just buy more and more bags for every temperature condition. When it comes to side and stomach sleeping, there are two features I like a lot. One is that the zipper goes almost all the way to the bottom. So theoretically, you could actually get a leg completely out of here if you needed to. But the thing that really sets the Disco and the Rift apart from other sleeping bags is their spoon shape. At the bottom of these sleeping bags, the material actually gets wider and allows you to move around quite a bit more without completely sacrificing the warmth of the volume of the bag. When I am on my side, I can actually turn all the way over onto my stomach and kick a leg up, and I still am inside the sleeping bag. I am able to move around and stay nice and warm, but I am not in a panic-inducing claustrophobic situation, and I can get onto my stomach. I still have a hood that is keeping my head warm, and I can get my arm up into it if I need to, to lay my head on my pillow, on my arm, get my arms up, keep them down. All of these positions work just fine with the Nemo Disco or its 800 fill brother, the Rift. Another bag with some innovative features for side and stomach sleepers is the Sierra Designs Cloud 20 degree rated sleeping bag. This is something of a hybrid between a quilt and a sleeping bag. From top to bottom, like a normal sleeping bag, you have an insulated hood, so you don't have to carry something extra to keep your head warm. Unlike a sleeping bag, instead of a zipper coming down the side, the bag is basically a folded quilt up on top. This wraps over and inside the bag and seals up with your own body. And that keeps the top very wide. It allows you to move your arms, get them up above your head if you're on your stomach. And although you might be laying on your stomach or side, the bottom still functions as a regular sleeping bag because it is enclosed. One of the nice things about a quilt or a sleeping bag that can zip up from the bottom is that you can maybe get a foot out or something if you need to, because often that's where you're going to overheat a little bit. Well, the Sierra Clouds has another innovative feature here, and that is a baffle at the bottom that is actually open. If you notice right here, we have a folded over piece. I can get all the way inside the bag. From inside, I can basically just kind of push my foot out under the baffle and out the bottom. I can actually lay here as if this was a blanket, and the only part that's going to be really wrapped around me is going to be from my waist to about my ankles. Another feature about the Cloud 20 that is very quilt-like is that there is no insulation on the back. The panel right here, you can actually see through this because they have not filled it full of down, because typically you're going to be laying on this. Now, you might wonder, well, what happens when I roll over? Well, the idea with this is to not roll over with the bag, the way you would with a sleeping bag, but more like a quilt, you roll around inside of it. But isn't it gonna pop up, and isn't this gonna make you cold? 
Not necessarily. And that is because this bag comes with a sleeping pad sleeve. You slide this bag over your sleeping pad, and this part covers the area with no insulation. When you get to the bottom, the bag is now insulated because it has the sleeping pad behind it. So if you're not only a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper, but a tosser and a turner, this thing is fantastic because it keeps the bag stuck where it's supposed to be. You don't have to worry about rolling over and exposing some part or rolling the hood over the top of your head or any of those kinds of annoying things that often happen in the backcountry. This is gonna make it a self-contained sleep system that's pretty much not gonna move once it's in place. The long version will attached to a 25 inch pad, whereas the standard length is only going to work on a 20. Finally, I'd like to suggest the Western Mountaineering Terralite sleeping bag. Now, for those of you that know sleeping bags, Western Mountaineering needs no introduction. These are pretty much the very best sleeping bags that can be had. If you are looking for the absolute best of the best, this is it. Now, you're going to pay top price for this, but one of the things that sets the Terralite apart from other sleeping bags besides the quality is its usefulness to side and stomach sleepers. And this is because the bag, although a essentially mummy shape, is specially designed to be wider in the areas where a leg is going to kick out if you need it to sleep on your stomach. Further, the zipper goes all the way around the bottom, so you can essentially open this sleeping bag up and use it like a blanket or a quilt. So it is extremely versatile, extremely comfortable, and it's going to work out fantastically if you are a side or stomach sleeper, or if you just want to treat it like a regular mummy bag. A good night's sleep on the trail is so important. That is where you get recharged, and if you get a bad night's sleep the whole next day, is going to be a lot harder than it needs to be. So even if it means carrying an extra few ounces or even a couple of pounds extra, if it translates into getting a good night's sleep, those extra pounds or ounces aren't going to make that much of a difference to me, whereas a good night's sleep is going to make a world of difference. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Tell me in the comments below what you do if you're a stomach or side sleeper. I'm always interested in a better night's sleep on the trail. And if the video helped you, how about giving it a like? Subscribe to Backcountry Pilgrim if you are into hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Click the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos drop. Until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching.